is working. Most people associate archaeology with survey and excavation, and we still do those things, but increasingly we're using other techniques such as remote sensing, ground penetrating radars, resistance meters, magnetometers, to actually give us an image of what might be under the Earth's surface before we start to do excavations. The Aboriginal community at Tabulum has asked us to come along and do some remote sensing of the old Turtle Point Mission Cemetery. The cemetery was used since the 1890s. Over the last 130 years there's been bushfires and the wooden monuments have been destroyed or degraded or people have forgotten or lost any sense of where the original graves might have been. While they're unsure of how many people are buried there, it's likely to be in the hundreds of people. The fire destroyed it. So what they, what we're trying to do here today is go over it again and try and find, find where the bodies are, our, our ancestors, so we can start marking them, you know, make a gravesite or something for our people. It's keeping the troops happy. The main technique we're using this time is GPR, or ground penetrating radar, and what that does is send a VHF signal through the ground surface, which then reflects off any objects that it finds buried. It might be coffins with the grave in, it might be the grave cut itself. So what we're really looking for is the difference between the undisturbed soil and the disturbed soil. So these are from several of the transects, but you can see particularly at around the just above the two meter mark, so one meter 80, there's a series of very strong reflections within the ground. As you know, six foot, it's about what burials were dug to. So this is one of the time slices at 1.8 meters or six foot, which is where you'd expect the base of a grave to be. And what you can see are these high intensity returns, uh, suspiciously in the two meters long, one meter wide range and you could put your money on, these are actually grave cuts. And you can see a number of them around, and on the surface survey, we've tried to plot these out as well, together with all of the other time slices. The second technique we're using is called a resistance meter. We have a frame with two probes that we push very largely into the ground, and it sends an electrical current from one pole to the other. When you get a disturbed section of soil, such as when you've got a grave, there's a lower electrical resistance because the churned up soil even if it's quite an ancient grave, is likely to hold more moisture than the soil around it. So it carries the electrical current much more easily than the natural ground surface. Everyone now uses drones for all sorts of things, for recreational purposes, professional purposes, but what archeologists are using them for is to get that perspective from above the ground surface. So when we look down, we can see features and sites that are not necessarily visible when we're standing on the ground surface itself. Using the drone, we can look at differences in soil colour or vegetation type. It can see depressions. And if we're lucky and do it very early in the morning, we can see shadows within the grave cuts, even if they're only very, very slight. Opportunities like Tabulum are really important for UNE students in that it gives them several things. It shows them all of these new digital techniques. It also gives them the opportunity to meet and work with community. And more importantly, it's a way of us giving back to the community as archaeologists. And I think this is something that we'd really like to instill on them. So far, we've found about 30 to 35 new graves. This is a great outcome, not just because we found some more sites, but it's been deeply satisfying for the students to have these experiences, for the staff to actually get to teach them face to face, and also for the community, because now they can get down to the questions about how they'd best like to memorialise their ancestors. Thank you.